Hello, welcome to the Profit Express. I'm your host, Tim Healy, and this is the show dedicated to the makers and shakers of business today. So that's why I'm inviting you to join me each and every week as we tackle all topics from sales and marketing to entrepreneurship and beyond right here on the Profit Express on 88.7 FM WRHU. On the Profit Express, I've had the fortune to interview many best-selling authors, authors whose books have sold literally tens of millions of copies each. Now, listen, while I've enjoyed all of their books, many of the stories and the analogies and the strategies behind those books focus on companies like the Apples and the Starbucks and the Facebooks of the world. Hugely successful, exciting, and sexy companies, no doubt. But something was missing. Now, many of the listeners of Profit Express are business owners. We're entrepreneurs of all different shapes and sizes. Now, what I think can be missing from some of those typical business books is that it might be hard for us to be able to relate to the likes of Apple and Facebook. So when today's guest released his new book, The Everyday Entrepreneur, I know I had to have him back on the Profit Express. And he is, of course, Rob Basso. And his journey of creating entrepreneurial success is one that everyone listening can relate to. Because you, that's right, you like Rob, we're all everyday entrepreneurs. And everyday entrepreneurs are what really matter most to our economy, let's face it. And it is the everyday entrepreneur who will be leading the recovery here locally on Long Island and nationally. So if you are an entrepreneur, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, or maybe you just love a great American success story, then keep it right here on the Profit Express on 88.7 FM. Now, I have to admit, in, in reading Rob's book, I got a real sense, I don't know how to put this, but it, it was a relatable factor in his stories. Now, if you're an entrepreneur reading this book, you're no doubt going to feel that, hey, I've been there. This guy, this guy, Rob, gets it. Now, well, let's talk about an entrepreneur's favorite topic. And, and, and Rob certainly talks about this in the book, risk. Now, as we all know, risk and our ability to accept it head on is a huge factor for us either succeeding or not succeeding in business. Now, one of the great stories that Rob shared in the book, The Everyday Entrepreneur, he interviewed Jeff Hoffman, who was the co-founder of Priceline.com. Now, while Jeff was accepted into Yale, he was faced with the challenge of not having a scholarship or the money to pay the tuition. And that is when he created his first company. Talk about risk. Now, since it was the early 1980s, Jeff thought to himself, well, he could make money in software. So he soon began proposing to law firms and accounting firms to do their software work for them. The problem being, he didn't know the first thing about how to create software. Undeterred, he just went out and, and he hired the talent from local high schools and from Yale. And Yale ended up being one of his clients. Talk about accepting risk head on. Now, Rob has a great analogy in the book. And he spoke about being young and inexperienced and how it can help you not notice, not notice, the huge hurdles you're about to face. And he referred to it as a no worries in sight belief system. Now, let me ask you, before we have Rob on, we're going to have him on in just a moment. I want you, the entrepreneur out there, thinking and listening right now to think about this one scenario. Are you experiencing a no worries in sight belief system? What are you letting get in the way of your success? Now, think about this next one, folks. Are you allowing the obstacles that you face today seem bigger than they did when you started and didn't know any better? Now, Rob is going to share his own stories of triumph and defeat as he pushed ever onward toward achieving success. This is not going to be a show you're going to want to miss, people. So let me tell you a little bit more about Rob before I have him on. Again, he's the owner of the New York region's largest independent payroll processing firm, Advantage Payroll. And with over 2,000 clients, he has his finger quite literally on the pulse of small businesses, and he's gained a wealth of knowledge which he's now sharing. More recently, he co-founded a newly created national bank while investing in multiple entertainment projects. Now, by developing creative ideas and taking risks all along the way, he has grown successful businesses as well as contributing to many others. So it's a, a pleasure to have back on The Profit Express, now author of the brand new book, The Everyday Entrepreneur. And again, that's Rob Basso. Rob, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I have to tell you, yes. this is my second time back here. Yes. and. I am feeling the energy tonight. It is exciting <laughs> to be here with Tim. And if you're new listeners, Tim is just a fireball of energy, and he makes uh, 
being interviewed more enjoyable. Well, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. That, that's a huge compliment because I know you've been interviewed all over the place. You know, I, you, you warmed up on Fox before you came here, though. Well, I did. You, you they had just to kind of cut your teeth a little bit. They just happened to, to like me or my opinions <laughs> one way or another. But, you know, the Profit Express is where I want to be. I'm here today. No, thank you very much. Now, you, you talked – the book kind of starts off with talking about risk and the ability to take risk. When did you personally realize you had the internal fortitude to take the necessary risk to be an entrepreneur? Well, believe it or not, it it happened at a really young age, and I think a lot of people will relate to this. I was probably about 11 or 12 years old, and a Mm -hmm. couple things happened when I was 11 and 12. First off, my parents got divorced, and so I was a product of really my mom raising three boys, and it was really really challenging to say the least. Mm -hmm. And I remember one winter morning, um, it was probably about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, and I delivered newspapers for the Philadelphia Inquirer, which was a morning paper. I knew all my friends were still asleep, but I was up there delivering newspapers. Well, the mask that I was wearing to keep my face warm fell in front of my face, and I slammed into a parked car, <laughs> crashing. My bike all bent out of shape. My brand new bike, which I just earned delivering papers the previous year. Right. I picked up the bike. I finished my paper out. Now, that's part of the story. Later that week, I was collecting because as a young kid, when they allowed kids to deliver newspapers, you had to go and collect for your actual fees for the delivery of the paper. I remember. And I can literally remember people pulling the shades, pulling the shutters, running away. You ever see that movie, (laughs) Better Off Dead, where I want my $2. There was a little kid running around trying to collect his money. That happened to me time and time again. And the fact that I got up every morning and I delivered that paper after my bike got trashed, after people didn't want to pay their bill... Looking back, those were the things that really made me realize I was the type of person that could be in business for myself. That, that's amazing. So it goes back to when you're 10 or 11 years of age and, and those moments delivering the, the, the newspaper amidst snowstorm and, and all sorts of challenges and deadbeats. Well, I didn't think of it back then, even for a moment. I, I was brought up, if you want something, you have to earn and go out and get it. We just weren't a family of means. If I wanted a new bike, if I wanted that new toy, it generally wasn't delivered to me in a shiny little bow. I had right. to go out and get it. And right. those are the types of things that uh, I don't think you can learn. I think that it's, it's, it's the way you're family is brought up. It's the way that you're brought into this world. And I happened to learn it at a very early age. I, hey, I'm not saying we weren't poor. We weren't living on the street. We just struggled like most middle class families. And in the book, you talk about, you know, humble beginnings. Do you think it was those humble beginnings that you just described that really um, can be attributed to where you are today? I think it is a big part of what we've been able to accomplish as a team within my organizations. And I have to tell you, I mean, one of my first offices was literally in the basement on boxes. And my mom was printing paychecks on an old Oki data printer, which is a dot <laughs> matrix printer. For those listening that are under uh, 35, probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but literally... Ch- I mean, it was unbelievable, and I never told people we were in a basement, and I never told people I was the president, and I never told people my mom was printing the checks. But those those humble beginnings really really made it possible for me to go on doing bigger, better things, and I had people that believed in me, and that was a big part of it.